In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn an old nasty painted valve cover that looks like this to something that looks like this. This is a carbon fiber with a red tint over it. So the first step is to prep the valve cover, get rid of all the old junk. So use a variety of wire wheels, nylon wheels, and an air sander. Uh, the sandpaper grid I'm using is 220. And this is really just to kind of knock down the stuff on all the flat surfaces because there's a ton that you can't get to with the sander and that's when the wire wheel comes in. So just kind of knock down everything you can and then go over with the wire wheel. All the corners and all the kind of the deep little ravines that are on these valve covers make it really hard to prep. But uh, the nylon wire wheels are great because they don't shear wires off into your eyeballs <laughs> so they're they last a lot longer and they're uh, they're flexible too so you can kind of press them into the corners that uh, otherwise would get eaten up by a wire wheel So for most of the prepping, I've been using a 180 grit wire wheel, which is that gray one. And for this one, I'm using a 220 grit. They're both softer than what they're labeled as, I think, but you wanna use a lighter grit on the plastic. Um, then I'm just using a Scotch-Brite pad and dish soap, because dish soap decreases. So this kind of helps just do a once over or anything, lift anything off you may have missed. And then I bake it in the oven at about 300 degrees for about 20 minutes. And what this does is lift any oil that may have soaked into the metal um, off. I don't bake the plastic uh, spark plug cover, obviously, but that just kind of helps burn off anything that you couldn't get to. Then I tape everything off. Pretty self-explanatory. After everything is taped off, uh, we're ready to prime. So I use Tamco's Direct to Anything primer. It's an epoxy primer and I cannot express how much I love this stuff. Um, I put it on really thin. I do about three or four real light coats. It, uh, it's almost easier to run than clear. So you wanna just apply it real nice and thin, about 10, 15 minutes in between each coat. But this stuff is ridiculous. And then on the plastic uh, spark plug cover, I use a adhesion promoter first real uh, I do two coats just real light like you want to dust it and then I use a high build 2k urethane primer which is just like normal car paint primer um, nice high build and then knock that down the Tamco direct to anything epoxy primer you don't have to wet sand for seven days um, that's the their cutoff for top coating so it's real nice and then for color I've been using this stuff for five years now it's just VHT you can find it at most auto parts stores it's a high temp spray paint it adheres to the primer really well. The HydroDip graphic itself really likes it. I've never had any issues with this. I do not recommend their primer, but I do recommend their paints. It's just, it, it works and it's cheap. So to my knowledge, I'm one of the only ones that I've ever seen that has this carbon fiber. So I'm not gonna tell you guys where I get this, but all my other graphics I get from Atlantic-Hydro.com. So all the more colorful ones is where I get that. I only order my carbon fiber from this one supplier, but it's it's the best looking carbon I've ever seen hydro dip wise. And that's not a me bragging thing. It's just, they make a fantastic product. So I tape the edges on the film so it doesn't roll up on itself. You'll. Uh, Maybe at some point I'll do a video and show you what happens when you don't tape it, but basically it just, it'll literally roll in on itself. So the tape just helps it stay straight. Let it sit on the water for a minute, 20 seconds. And then I do three pretty, I mean, pretty normal passes. Not too fast, not too slow, just like a nice medium coat. Um, if you do too much, you will blow holes through it. If you don't do enough, uh, it won't liquefy and you will have air bubbles that kind of get trapped all over the valve cover. Um, I was always wondering why people dip at a diagonal when they do when I was first learning how to do this and it's so you don't get air bubbles trapped. If you go straight down, there's nowhere for the air to go. But if you go at a diagonal, you kind of, 
kind of push it away as you go down. So that's why I and everyone else does it that way. Yeah, you can see, I mean, this in direct sunlight, this carbon fiber is ridiculous. It's, I mean, it, it makes me look like I really, really know what I'm doing, but really it's just a, a fantastic graphic. This part is also pretty self-explanatory, but basically there's a, a slime that's kind of left on the film. And so by rinsing it off, you're pushing that away. You see the, the white suds are kind of an indicator of if you still have more rinsing to do. And when you're all done, it'll kind of have a matte finish. And it in on camera, it's hard to see, but like there you can kind of tell it's a little bit, you know, the water runs off it. And then I let these sit overnight. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed opinions on this. Some people shoot, you know, they'll blow the water off and they'll shoot clear an hour after they dip it. Um, I've just always found it better to wait. 13.5 hours later. So here I made a little mistake. Uh, I have to tint this red, but I uh, kind of spaced that out and went ahead and sanded down the letters. So uh, beforehand, I sanded those down um, when it was just in primer, because the primer is really thick. So I sanded that down and then sanded it again, makes it a little easier to make a clean clean finish. Um, this is Duplicolor, which is actually owned by VHT. So it's kind of all the same product, but I don't think VHT offers this tint. Um, again, been using this for about five years now since I started my business and no complaints. It reacts to heat well, it likes the graphic, it likes my clear, it's great stuff. So here you see me doing what I just explained to you that I should have done originally. So clear coat here in Denver, we have a company called LKQ. I don't know if they're nationwide or not, but they have a house brand of body supplies, I guess. And uh, a guy that ran a body shop turned me on to this clear coat. So I tried it. I've been using it for about three and a half years now. It's what I painted the whole Jeep in. It's what I did the Miata card. I mean, everything I've painted has been this stuff. It lays really well. It lasts. It doesn't lift. There's no weird reactions to it. It looks good if I lay it well enough, which on this, luckily I did. Um, it's about $170 for, I mean, probably almost two gallons worth by the time you add the, the hardener to it. So, I mean, it's a good deal. It does last. It's no PPG, but uh, for, for what I'm doing, it, it works really well. So let that sit overnight. The clear is still pretty stinking soft, um, but that's a good time to take all the tape off. Otherwise, when it gets hard, it could lift the clear when you pull everything else off with it. And now we have our final product. All right, guys, so last video, I asked you guys to critique the channel and you did and I appreciate it. The biggest complaint was none of our projects are done, which is extremely true. And I'm sorry, my mind is just bouncing back and forth between everything. So we're going to finish the Miata cart because it's closest to being done. We're going to bounce back to the Jeep, build a roll cage for it, get it running and driving and a put a light tune on it and just see what it does and enjoy it this year. Uh, the bug needs to run and drive. So that'll be after the Jeep is like drivable. Um, and then we've been filming a bunch of random stuff, which I don't know if you guys like, but it's it's fun when I have friends come by and we just do shenanigans. So there's gonna be some random stuff of that coming through. Um, I worked on the Mini Cooper one night and then everything else got in the way, drained a bunch of diesel out of it, got it to fire, but uh, I think there's more diesel left in it. So we're going to pick up on that whenever I find time. Um, so for now, we're gonna finish the Miata cart, bounce back to the Jeep, and then the bug and we'll just keep moving. Thanks guys.